U.S. Special Forces have rescued an American citizen who had been kidnapped by armed men in an operation on Saturday in northern Nigeria that is believed to have killed several of his captors. The forces, including Navy SEALs, rescued 27-year-old Philip Walton, who had been abducted on Tuesday from his home in neighboring southern Niger. A diplomat source in Niger said Walton is now at the U.S. Ambassador's residence in Niami. The Pentagon confirmed the operation, but did not provide the identity of the hostage. Walton, who kept camels, sheep and poultry, and grew mangoes near the border with Nigeria, was kidnapped by six armed men with AK-47 assault rifles who arrived on motorcycles at his home in southern Niger village early on Tuesday. His wife, young daughter and brother were left behind. Campaigning in North Carolina on Saturday, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence has praised the military and promised a nationwide economic recovery was already underway. He boasted that the armed forces of the United States of America are the greatest force for good in the history of the world. Biden, for his part, has accused Trump of giving up in the fight against coronavirus, which has killed almost 229,000 people in the United States. Last night, U.S. Navy SEALs rescued an American taken captive in Niger just a couple of days ago. That U.S. citizen is safe and no military personnel were injured in the operation. The armed forces of the United States of America are the greatest force for good in the history of the world. We have joining us to discuss this, Captain Bish Johnson, former U.S. Marine and National Security. Thank you very much for joining us, Captain Johnson. For having me, and good morning. Good morning. Uh, please tell us more on this kind of operation and the significance. Well, this, this type of operation happens uh, uh, quite often. Um, uh, for those who are not aware, uh, the United States uh, government has a policy. It's a long-standing policy. It's, it didn't just start with uh, uh, Donald Trump. It's a long-standing policy that the uh, U.S., anywhere, any of the citizens are held captive, uh, the American government will do whatever is in its power to rescue that citizen. And so that is what you saw happen in Nigeria. Uh, since Donald Trump came into office, Donald Trump has been able to rescue uh, over 55 uh, U.S. citizens in 24 different countries. And the significance is what you saw the, the vice president of the United States uh, uh, touting during the campaign, that the uh, American military is a force of, uh, is a force of good. And uh, it shows that they have the capacity to go into any country and rescue their citizens. What's the message of this rescue to the Nigerian government over the treatment of its citizens? Okay, so what it, what it says, I'm hoping that Nigerian government will learn from what uh, the Americans have done uh, and understand that uh, uh, they need to value the life of their own citizens, uh, that the life of every citizen matters. Uh, you can see the risk taken and the amount of resources that was committed uh, into this operation by the U.S. government just to rescue the life of uh, just a citizen. So um, that should be a lesson for Nigeria to learn, uh, to treat their, their value, the life of their citizens, and be ready to, you know, not to spare any resources uh, in trying to rescue any of the citizens that is in danger uh, in, a, in any place around the globe. And what, what do you think we need to do to have the help of American troops, you know, in uh, helping to release captives, including uh, Leah Sharibu with Boko Haram? You know, I, have, I was thinking that uh, when President Mohammed Buhari was invited to the White House by President Trump, that these are some of the assistance that he would have asked. Uh, if you look at since after that uh, trip, not much has been done. Um, Nigeria has not really benefited much from that trip. Uh, the only thing that happened after that trip was the purchase of those aircraft, which to me is uh, one of uh, Donald Trump's objectives of, uh, you know, expanding uh, U.S. exports to foreign countries and uh, generating revenue. So I was thinking that it should have been part of the discussion 
and that uh, we should have been able to have, even if it's a small contingent of uh, U.S. troops, you know, right here in Nigeria, special forces assisting Nigerian government uh, with training and helping them to engage in rescue operations like this. Uh, you saw what happened with that operation is that we didn't, it, once there is a hostage taken, the first few days is very, very crucial. If you miss those first few days, it's going to take a while and it will cost more for you to be able to rescue such people. And that is what you're seeing happening with those that are already that are in captive uh, uh, in Nigeria because we allowed quite a significant amount of time to elapse, thereby making it more complicated and more difficult to find those people and rescue them. You saw that this man was kidnapped on Tuesday. By Saturday, he was rescued. And the reason why it happened like that is because they didn't want the captives uh, to, to go far deep into the country and thereby making the process you know, more complicated and, and expensive. Hmm. And you recall that Nigeria was on the verge of getting that kind of support in the rescue of the Chibok girls. But something happened that truncated that move. Can we revisit that arrangement? Sure, it is possible. I think Nigerian government can revisit the, the, that arrangement. Uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs communicating with uh, the Secretary of uh, State and this, uh, then with the, the, the uh, Minister of Defense and DOD, uh, all of them working together. I'm sure that such an arrangement can be worked out again. Uh, but another thing that is playing out on the ground is that sometimes U.S. don't trust some of all these countries. And so he's very unwilling to uh, engage in such risky operations uh, with them, uh, fearing that such operations may be sabotaged and then the, the lives of their service members will be endangered. That's why sometimes it's very, it's very difficult to get U.S. to get involved. Instead, they can give you advice on how you can do it on your own. Thank you very much uh, for your thoughts, Captain Johnson. Thank you very much for having me.